Not too bad. Uh, I wanted to ask about your experience fighting in the bubble. You've been in there once before. How do you think that's going to uh, to impact you coming into this bout on Friday night? Uh, the first the first time it caught me really un- unexpected. Um, you know, but this time you know it's it's you know I'm more prepared. Um, we you know we brought a lot of stuff with us from home you know to help us with you know training in our room in the bubble, and um, the food here is actually so much better. You know. I remember the first bubble, you know, I was barely eating, you know, and losing so much weight. But now, you know, the food here is amazing. We got the room service here, you know, food from the from the restaurants downstairs. You know, it's actually, it's going pretty good. I'm not complaining at all. I I, uh, I remember you were on the card last year for this YouTuber boxing event um, about, a, about a year ago, uh, this last couple of weeks. Your, your, your pal Jake Paul is fighting again this weekend. Will you be watching on Saturday night at this incredible Mike Tyson, Roy Jones card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm fighting... I'm fighting Friday and I fly back Saturday. I'm probably going to be home around three o'clock. So I, I'll actually make it to watch the fight. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm rooting for Jake and um, it's going to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for, you know, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones fight. How do you think Jake's fight's going to go and how do you think Mike Tyson's fight's going to go? I think Jake is going to win because um, Nate never fought before. You know, it's, it's, you know, I understand he's like an athlete, you know, ex-pro athlete, but you know, getting hit in the face is different than dribbling a ball. And um, with the Roy Jones and Mike Tyson fight, I'm rooting for Roy Jones because he's my favorite fighter. And I hope he boxes his whole, the whole fight, all 10 rounds. Thank you very much for your time, man. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How you doing, Nikita? What's up, man? How's everything? <laughs> Everything's great, man. So, I mean, you're part of this new uh, generational wave of t- very talented New York City fighters coming into the boxing. You know, what, what do you feel separates you, though, or makes you special from the others? Uh, just just my image, my my message, you know, you know, like I, all these fighters, they look like actual fighters, you know, bus cuts, you know, mean, mugging and everything. But, you know, I look like a, like a TikTok boy, like, you know, like, what am I doing in the ring? But when people see me in the ring, they respect me so much more, you know, never judge a book by its cover. So, you know, I, I'm just, I feel like I'm really, really different. You know, I have a, you know, I, I just stand out a lot more than all these fighters. That's what I believe. Right. Now you've been very active, you know, going into your professional career. Do you look to keep up this momentum going into 2021 or are you, as the fights get tougher, do you look on, you know, taking longer breaks and stuff like that? On, you know, uh, Just, you know, I'm going with the wave, going with the flow, you know, whatever happens, happens. But if we got the momentum going, we're going to keep it, keep it going. If we're, you know, if we need to take a step back a little bit, we're going to take a step back. You know, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So, you know, we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're doing everything smart. So, you know, we're just going, going every, first we take care of one step and then we go into the next step. So right now, the first step is taking care of Friday, you know, getting that knockout, right? All right. <laughs> Thank you, Chan. Thank you for your time. Wish you the best. Thank you. Uh, Matt, please. It says Matt for behind the gloves. Um, cheers for joining us, Nikita. Um, for those who don't know, can you just explain to everyone and to the fans where your nickname came from? Why Chop? Um, the real, the real, the real story is I'm white and chocolate from the waist down. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> that's that's the, yeah, that that's that's my story. But um, no, um, where it came from is you know I was I grew up, you know, in a, you know, rough neighborhoods. You know, I'm, I'm the only white kid in all the gyms. You know, I'm like a light bulb there. So you know, sparring and, you know, I was lighting this kid up and they were like, yo, this this white kid, he got rhythm, he got style. You know, sort of move, call him white chocolate. And just from there, you know, everybody, everybody just, you know, just, you know, stuck with me. Which fighter did you look up to before coming into the professional game? Was there, was there a specific fighter that inspired you to make that step to be, you know, to become professional or just to start boxing in general? Uh, well, I started boxing at a really young age, so I never really kind of like looked up to anybody. You know, it just kind of like my dad put me in and it just like happened. I, you know, I was young. I didn't like, I didn't really understand what was happening. Sorry for that. Um, you know, I was really young, just going along with the flow. But as I was getting older, I understood that I'm a fighter, that, you know, this is my sport. And so, yeah, I really didn't have nobody, you know, 
I guess I like, you know, Roy Jones Jr., Manny Pacquiao, but they, you know, they're not the reason, they're not the reason why I started fighting. You know, I just started fighting because, you know, I'm a born fighter. And yeah, just, you know, that's why I started fighting. Out of the current champions in the middleweight division, who do you regard as number one? And if you could pick who to face, who would it be? Uh, number one, I don't really, I don't, I don't really watch nobody. I watch myself, but you know, in the future, I would love to fight Canelo, fight. Um, I don't really have no names on top of, on top of my head. I really, I don't watch nobody. You know, whoever comes, you know, in a year or two, whoever I, I'll fight, take the t title from them or defend. You know, it's gonna happen. So I'm just worried about myself right now, and you know, getting up there first to the ranks. Good luck, Friday. Cheers, Nikita. Thank you. Boxing source, please. Hey there, Nikita. How's it going? What's up, man? How's everything? Doing good, doing good. How's the adjustment been from last year in 2019, you know, having about six fights to here in 2020, only being uh, involved in, like, two fights? Like, have you, like, kind of changed your regimen up as far as, like, training, or has it been basically the same just being in the ring for two fights this year? Oh, no, it's, just, it's the same thing, you know, no, no, there's no change. It's just Corona, you know, kind of slowed things down. But, you know, everything is still the same. We're just stepping up, stepping up the training. That's pretty much the only difference. And uh, taking it more serious because, you know, when I started 2019, it was, I, you know, I was 1-0, 2-0. Now I'm 9-0, and you know, and it's just going up from there. But, you know, everything is still the same. You just we're taking training more serious and, you know, just going up from there. Everything's the same. True. How is the contrast being in uh, Brooklyn in comparison to like uh, Richmond, Virginia? Being in Virginia is kind of a little bit of a change of pace, you know, a little bit slower than being in Wait, Brooklyn. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean, Richmond, Virginia? Like, because. Oh, uh, what's that? What do you what do you what do you mean, Richmond, Virginia? Like, you, like you're being around the Virginia area, correct? Well, I was born there for like one day. Oh, one day, and then <laughs> so no, you no, just yeah, went yeah, straight yeah. from. Like, yeah, I, that's crazy. You know about that, but no, I was I was born there for one day, so you know I was literally born there and went back to Brooklyn. So, you know, I only know about Brooklyn, New York. Oh, okay, gotcha. No problem, man. Thanks. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> hey, Nikita, John here, Pro Boxing fans. You're right. Yeah, how's everything? Uh, yeah, good, good. Um, has the professional ranks gone pretty much as you expected? You're, you know, very good amateur. You're now nine and zero. Oh, you know. What what have you made of life in the professional ranks so far? And you fought in some of the best venues already. So, yeah, how do you sum it up? I didn't I didn't expect it at all, to be honest. You know, when I was going in, I had no idea what was going on, what I'm getting myself into. I just knew, you know, no head gears, 10 ounce gloves, and just fight. But I didn't know it was going to be this crazy. It's like, a, you know, everything's going so quick. It's like a movie. Fighting in the craziest venues. I didn't expect because I seen... A lot of fighters, they start off their first three fights, four fights, they fight in, like, basketball courts and, you know, like, just, like, beat up places. But just every fight is, you know, big venues, big stadiums. It's just, you know, unexpected. I did, I, you know, I didn't expect none of this. So, you know, it's a, it's a crazy adventure that I'm just going along with. What does victory on Friday night do for you in your career? <sighs> what it does for me, just, you know, moving on to the next, you know, uh, one step closer to my dream, my goal, and um, you know, just one step closer for everybody to know my name. Cheers, best of luck, Friday. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm gonna thank someone for taking time to talk to us. You know, you, you mentioned at the very start that uh, they you're they brought in your your switch in in here. You know, I was talking to Michael Conlon before his first fight in the, in his bubble. He was mentioning talking about bringing in his PlayStation and having a more relaxed atmosphere during mm. fight week compared to how it was pre-pandemic. And that's something that you're also kind of noticing that there is a, a more relaxed, a more chill uh, atmosphere, you know, when you're not dealing with media workouts or any of the obligatory uh, fight week obligations here in the bubble. Uh, I guess, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a little bit more relaxed. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I remember before it's, it's hard to think about how life was before. Cause it just changed so quickly and, you know, everybody's adapting to it. So it's like me thinking about, you know, before Corona, how everything was, it's kind of like, I can't like, you know, it's like, that was it really like that because life just literally flipped so quickly. So it's like, 
just imagining us walking without a mask, you know, in the public is like unbelievable. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like we're going to be walking with masks now forever. Who knows? Right. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. You know, I'm a gamer. You know, I always, I always gamed, always recorded, always boxed my whole life. You know? So, you know, just even before Corona, always brought my switch, always played it oh, no, before Corona. There was, no, there was no switch, I think. So, um, yeah, I'll always play my PS4, always, you know, all that, you know. But, yeah, that I answered it. <laughs> um, you know, as far as, you know, that you mentioned, you know, just life just kind of turning on its head, you know, just because of the coronavirus. The, did it feel easy, you know, after that first fight and when you kind of were starting to prepare for this next upcoming fight, did it feel like it was, you know, something that now just kind of seems secondhand nature that you kind of already know? what the deal is, you know, prepare with gym restrictions and COVID mm -hmm. um, regulations in place. Does it now feel like it's now becoming a new normal instead of something that you're just going to have to deal with? Yeah. So the first, the first time, you know, when I fought in August, it was everything, you know, I had no experience fighting during COVID. So, you know, everything was so weird. I remember always comparing everything that I'm doing new, I always compared it to like the old, but this is the second time I'm here, you know, and fighting in the bubble and, it's like, it's like a normal, you know, it's like a norm now. It's, you know, I already know that, you know, you, I can't leave this. I can't leave my room. I can't do this, can't do that. And, you know, it just feels, I don't know, it feels normal to me. I'm not complaining. <laughs> and lastly, you know, has the pandemic sort of maybe changed how you view maybe what your goals are for 2021 or your project or your, your development as a fighter with, you know, but the fight's kind of being a little harder to make with everything that's been going on. Uh, it's, it's just, it's just the training. I just, you know, our gyms, you know, they close now at eight, I think, or seven, you know, before I used to train, you know, twice, at, twice in a gym every single day. Now I'm training only in the morning and then training, you know, with my dad, you know, either outside or inside my home. But, you know, it's just the training. I feel like everything else is the same, you know, fights, you know, fights are still happening. We're going to be fighting and, you know, everything is the same. It's just, you know, I just hope, they fixed something with the gyms. So it could be trainer, easier to train at the gyms.